Hello, reformers, and welcome to a special feature of Steel and Sword. Now, this is a mod that was recommended to me and even suggested to me by a couple of people in the comments section, and I have decided, well, let's give it a go, shall we? So, without further ado, let us start a new game and we will see what this mod has in store for us. So, yes, this is giving us the lowdown on males versus females, of course. And we will be a male for this, as I usually do like to do that. Now, aha, we have a different aspect here of what we want our father to be. We could make him a doctor, and I think we probably will do that, because then we may gain some surgery skill, which would help us in the early game a little bit more. So, yeah, why not? Let's do that. You were born the son of a doctor, learning the secrets of medicine and healing. Your father gave you his medical book as a gift on your 18th birthday. And this is also new, by the looks of things. Your mother raised you alongside your father. She was. What? What do we want to make her? Well, she could be a nurse. That's pretty good, because <laughs> our father was a doctor. That would only make sense, surely? Yeah, let's do that. Why not? Okay. Your mother was a nurse. She showed you how to treat wounds and teach other children. As you grew up, you had a favorite hobby. Aha. It was what? Stealing was our hobby, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, hmm. Maybe uh, bartering with the local merchants. I thought that might be quite good to get some trade skill going and maybe some looting as well. Well, stealing would probably increase looting. So, should we just go for riding? Hmm. Yeah, let's go for riding. Get us a little bit of riding skill, perhaps. You went out and rode for hours each day, becoming comfortable with horses while young. You started to learn about the world when you were very young. You spent your early life as... Well, there are a couple of new options here, I believe. A gypsy, a musician, and a war refugee. Well, we could, considering... Yeah, I think we'll... Do a musician, why not? That should be rather fun. As a growing boy, you became a musician. You learned how to draw crowds and you became skilled at making and fixing instruments. Then as a young adult, life changed as it always does. And we became something. What do we want to be here? Well, hmm, a jester might be pretty good. Hmm, I don't know. Hmm, okay, well, we'll just go for a minor here, why not? Though the distinction felt sudden to you, somewhere along the way you had become a man, and the whole world seemed to change around you. You became a miner, working with heavy tools to dig up the precious ore that everyone wanted to process. Aha. And you became known for... Oh my goodness. Oh, wow, okay. Your wit and charm. Why not? <laughs> Let's do that. You are a charming young man, always being able to make friends and convince others to agree with you, but soon everything changed, and you decided to strike out on your own as an adventurer. And what made you take this decision was personal revenge, of course, because we do like to get that little bit of strength increase, I believe. You may face some difficulties establishing yourself as an equal among Calradia's great lords. Aha! So that's giving us a little bit of a tip there that we may indeed have chosen... A little more difficult than we necessarily would have liked, I suppose, but I suppose that is all part of the fun. Okay, so what name are we going to have here? That is going to be a rather difficult decision. Well, what are we? We were a number of things. Our mother and father were in the medical professions, and then we became a musician. Well, we spent our early life as a musician, and then we became a miner. So that is a very wide assortment of different things. So. I will think about this for, hopefully, a short space of time. Okay, so as things usually go, I visited a pop star name generator, and I put in my own name, which is James, and it came out with Donnie Young, so why not? Let's go with that. Now, as you may see here, we do have a pretty considerable amount of leadership, persuasion, surgery, wound treatment, and a couple of points in engineering, first aid, riding, and horse archery, which is actually not too bad. So, without further ado, we don't really need to increase our charisma that much, because we do already have three in leadership, although it would be quite nice to get a little bit more in prisoner management, I think. So, let's see here. What do we want? Let's go for another point in riding skill, make sure we have a good horse to depend on, and 
Then we'll increase our strength by one, increase our intelligence a little bit, get some more skill points. And I think, are we going to use a bow? Because we do have horse archery, so maybe it would be a cool idea to use some bows. So let's increase our bow skill a little bit with some horse archery alongside it. And then, what do we want? We probably want to get some pathfinding. Let's get one in that. And then let's get some... In Iron Flesh, I'd like to get a little bit more HP, but I think we can do that as we level up. So we do want to run away from bandits, or indeed chase bandits, so let's get some more in Pathfinding there. And then increase our archery skill a little bit there. So that seems fine. Let's head on and wood, and we will randomize ourselves here. So, aha, that looks very dapper, does it not? That is the way to go. That is Donnie Young, oh yes, and he is going to be very young. Okay, so, yes, that seems fine. Hair color, should we make him a little bit lighter? Yeah, let's make him a little bit lighter there. There we go, okay. And we are in Calradia. This does not have a different map just yet, but let's see here. What shall we go for? This has been quite a long time since I've had the chance to choose between factions. Now, I do believe we have started in the Saranid Sultanate with one of our other series, and we've also started in the Vrodox. But we have not started in the Nord Kingdom. I think for one special feature, I did start in Sargoth. And I'm not entirely sure, but I don't believe we have started with the Kingdom of Aegeas. And that, I think, is going to be our choice here. Because, as you know, we are going to be an archer. And many of the Vagiers are excellent archers. So, I think we will go with that. There we are. Okay, so now we arrive in Ravadin. And we have a sword, thank goodness. Okay, oh, no. Don't shoot me. How dare you. There we are. Take him out as best we can. And, whoa, we actually took him out with the handle of the sword, I suppose. The grip. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so, yes, here we are greeted by the merchant of Ravadin. And we are now about to speak to him. And he's going to ask us, of course, to look after his brother and indeed rescue him. So, let us get out here and we will see what we have for us. Okay, so very standard looking map, but I do have a feeling that many of the additional features are going to be rather impressive. So, without further ado, we have 135 dinars. Well, let's hope that everyone is rather cheap to recruit, that is for sure. And our party has nothing to eat! Oh no, that is not good. Okay, so we can get nine Vagia recruits, that's very good. However, now we are going to have a couple of issues with feeding them. As you may see here. Okay, well, we have Pilgrim Disguise and a Rusty Sword to assist us here, and we have a Step Horse too. That's not too bad. So hopefully, we'll be able to head into the marketplace here, and we will be able to buy some bread. No! Okay, so apparently, bread is 50, and we have 45. Just my luck, is it not? Okay, well, let us attempt to try to find the merchant once again. I believe he's going to be here. Oh, there's Lezalet. Is he free? I think he is free. Well, let's speak to him after this. And I will hunt for bandits. Yes, I will. Okay, so let's speak to him. And please be free, Lezalet. You are excellent, at least with your trainer skill. And... Ah, 400 dinars. I didn't even have that at the start, so I suppose I really shouldn't be kicking myself too hard, but nevertheless, let's try to see upstairs, and we will see whether there are any other NPCs that we may recruit. No, it appears that will not be the case this time around. So, where is the bandit in question? There he is. Band of robbers. Let's go in there. Oh, yes. Yes, we brought steel. We definitely brought steel. Ten of our troops against four of theirs. We have some very deadly-looking weaponry. That is for sure. So hopefully they will prove themselves worthy adversaries for these bands of robbers. Now, we do outnumber them rather considerably, so we should be fine. However, I was actually thinking that we would start with a bow, considering. But I think I should have chosen archery as our early life, I believe. Yes, or in our spare time we did this and this. So yes, I think archery probably would have been a better idea. But, well, it actually appears that the Vagiers have some unconsciousness weapons, which is actually much better than I imagined. However, the problem with that is, of course, I don't have any prisoner management. Ah, well, never mind. We can only take one, it appears. So, 
that's not too bad. And, oh, we didn't even get to that screen, so that's okay. Of course, it is for the quest. So, yes, I'll spare your life, but in exchange, I want to know where the hostages are being held, of course. So, let's see here. We can put on a cap, and everything else is better in terms of what we are already wearing. Okay, so, kidnappers hideout. Oh, yes. Let's head over here. Now, has anyone leveled up? Yes, they have. Okay, so let's go for a footman and a conscript. Let's take a look at what they level up into. Okay, so it appears the conscripts do not level up into anything, which is rather peculiar, but maybe they have increased stats? Whoa, okay. They have some excellent throwing skill, as you can see here. Oh, goodness me. Okay, well, that is good to know, and I suppose we'll just level up another footman so we can see what they level up into later down the line. So let's, without further ado, head in here as quickly as we can, take these guys out, and then we'll be able to buy some food for our troops here. Now, I would like to see where the conscript is. I'm sure he's here somewhere, unless he's actually knocked unconscious a little bit. Hmm, maybe he was. That does not bode well for our success in this mission, but we can only hope. Okay, now, I don't have a shield, as you may notice, so if these fellows do see fit to throw anything at us, or indeed shoot something at us, then I think we're going to be in for a world of pain, but as you see here, our Vajir footman is actually equipped with a very nice battle axe. Goodness me, he took out that looter in one hit, which is very impressive. Oh my goodness. Oh wow, okay, so it appears the Vajir units are very, very good, and Donny has now acquired his second kill, I believe. And we will now hopefully try for a third. Yes, there we are. Very nice. Now, I think I may want to stay around here. Yes, I think we probably want to stay around here just in case the enemies do decide to respawn or show themselves from outside the shack or this cave here. But, oh, it appears not. And that was the end of that particular quest. Stop getting into trouble, merchant's brother. How dare you. Okay, so, oh, we actually get some pretty reasonable falchions here. However, I do realize that the rusty sword has a greater weapon reach, so maybe we'll use that as well. Okay, well, we'll take the rest for selling anyway. Oh, yes, take as much as we can, that is for sure. There we go. Okay, so now we do have some of our recruits leveling up. Let's get some more footmen there. And then we will head back into Ravadin and hopefully be able to acquire some more money. Yes, there we are. 200 dinars. Excellent. Okay. Now, I would like to make some more. And, of course, we are going to be dealing with the corrupt captain of the guard. I'll lead the, the rebels in their efforts. And we will now deal some damage with our Falchion, hopefully. So, this will be one of the rebels, I believe. Usually, they are here. Yes, there we are. Okay, now let's take him out as quickly as we can. Oh yes, the Falchion's doing some excellent work right there. And now we need to help that... Never mind. Okay, I was going to say we need to help that guy, but it appears he was taken out very, very quickly indeed. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is not good. Well, at least we can block with the Falchion. That's always a plus. Now, I'm hoping that we'll actually be able to assist our guys rather considerably here, so hopefully the merchant will stay alive. Is that it? Wow, we really survived it that easily? Goodness me. Okay. Usually I have a terrible time of this particular event, but wow. Okay, that's good. And, oh yes, another 200 dinars. And I think we'll say, let every villain learn to fear the name Donny Young. Of course. Okay, there we go. Very nice indeed. So, he will be leaving town, and we will also do the same, and we will speak to the guild master, I think. Do you happen to have a job for me? Ah, yes, this is one of those better missions from the Guildmaster. A group of bandits have kidnapped the daughter of a friend of mine and are holding her for ransom. 620? Ah, I was hoping for a lot more than that, but I think we will not quibble about any amount of money. And he's only willing to pay us 150 dinars when we bring the girl back. That is definitely not going to do, so we're probably just going to take on the bandits in Mortal Kombat. So we can keep the money, of course. And as a result of us actually having some loot to sell, we're going to be buying quite a lot of food, as much as we can have, at least. And maybe a shield as well. I'm not entirely sure whether a shield is necessary at this moment in time, but I think we may as well. Buy some bread and some cheese. And we may as well buy some dried meat as well. Do we really need that? We don't really, do we? No, let's just get some more bread. 
Okay, that should be fine. Now, any armor that we can... Oh my, okay, rather expensive. And there is the excellent Moose Helm, of course. And now, let's see here. Hmm, I would like to get some gloves, but I have a feeling that the gloves we can afford are not going to be too useful. But we could get a large bag of Devil's Horns, which looks like a very nice pack of arrows. Oh my, okay, so I would like to get a bow. We could get this Kerjit bow. Hmm. Or this cracked longbow, which is actually better, although slower. It's slower. Aha. All right. So. Hmm. I don't think I have the money for it yet, because there are no budget arrows here, unfortunately. The best arrows we can get are only 800, and that would make me bankrupt. So, yes, I think we'll leave getting a bow for now, and hopefully we'll be able to acquire one at a later time. However, we can hopefully get Lezolet, who is 400 dinars, of course, and we have that spare. So, yes, 400 dinars for Lezolet. Wonderful. Now, as you may see here... Once we have a look at his skills, he does, if I recall correctly, yes, have an excellent trainer skill. Five in trainer for him, and some very good stats alongside that. He actually starts with a better sword than we have, so that is very good for him, and we'll just have to get him geared up as we go along. So let's actually get him into the battle a little bit earlier on. There we are. Okay, so where do we need to head to? I think we need to head to, to Shibdin, or something along those lines. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be over here somewhere. I do believe that it is a Vajir village. Unless I am incorrect about that. I probably am, actually. It appears I am. Oh, my. Okay, well, that's actually not too good, is it? No. Okay, well, let's head over to the locations. And we will see where it actually is. I really should know, but I really thought it was a Vajir village. Because, of course... Ah! I see. Okay, it is close. But it is a Swedian village instead. So, let's see what we want to do here. We want to head over here first, I think. Recruit a couple of volunteers, of course. And then we'll head over here as well. There we go. Okay, that seems good. Now, we'll head over to Tshipton and we'll see what we can do about the kidnapped girl, of course. Now, after I complete this quest, I think what I will do is enhance progression a little bit. And give you guys... A small insider peek at what each unit will advance into at a later date, because of course we would like to, oh my goodness, avoid the tribal warlords if possible, but yes, oh no, oh my. Okay, so as you see here, we have run into some of the, <laughs> well, unique bandits to this particular mod, so let's see what we can do. Gonna get some more footmen. Oh my. Let's hope these footmen are actually going to make a hell of a difference in our fight against these tribal warlords. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's do it. We will fight you to the end. We have 22. They have 22. Let us just hope that they have no cavalry. Otherwise, we're going to be in a spot of bother here. But, as you may see, the renowned value for this battle is 40. Does that mean that these guys are excellent and we are terrible? Oh no. Please let us be able to at least take out a couple of them before we are absolutely vanquished. Well, who knows? Let's see how it goes. Oh, no. Okay, one guy has a horse, and he has a lance. Oh, wow. Okay. That's actually rather extravagant for this point. And let's try to do a little bit of fleeting damage here. Try and get his cavalry in a disarray here. <laughs> oh, no. Don't get shot now, and... Whoa, okay. These guys are definitely not people to be trifling with, that is for sure, as you may see here. Oh my goodness. And unfortunately, it does not appear we have the diplomacy mod that enables us to fight, but this actually gives us a good chance to run away, which is fine. So, let's go this way. Okay, yes, Lezolet, please do not interrupt me, otherwise we're probably going to have to fight these guys again. No! Oh my goodness. Okay, so as you may see... And can probably tell these tribal warriors are excellent. So, I think we are going to have to do the unmentionable. And that is, of course, pull back, leaving some soldiers behind. Only two soldiers behind. But, as you see here, we are losing 20 morale. Which I suppose at this point in the game is not going to affect us too much. But, I suppose it was necessary to get away. 
Oh my. Okay, so that is a small example of the excellent bandits that you will be fighting in Steel and Sword. So, I didn't want to actually go to the Guildmaster. I wanted to head over here, see if we could... Oh, yes. A lovely Chinese crossbow right here. And a tempered bowie knife, too. That is great. I like seeing all of the various new weapons that the mods have to offer, that is for sure. And unfortunately, we can only buy a short bow. I'd like to buy this, but we don't have enough. So, yes, and that as well. Ah, okay. Well, yes, as I said, I will probably be cutting away now. I will venture around the land and attempt to get units from every single faction, and I will show off all of the higher ranking units so that you will know what to expect if you were to level them up to full status. So, I will see you soon. Okay, so as you can see, we have increased our company size rather considerably since we last left off, and I have gathered a variety of different units, as you see here. So, now, we are going to go through all of these just to take a look at all of their stats and so forth. Now, as you may see here, the Vagias also, of course, become some excellent archers, and... Yes, as you see, they do have some excellent power draw skill. Look at that, six in power draw. Very nice indeed. So, other than that, they do become Vagia guards in their infantry line. They also have Vagia knights, which is very nice to see. As well as some yeoman warders. I do believe these are Swadians. Now, these are the level up from a Swadian crossbowman, believe it or not. And as you see, look at them. They are so incredible. Look at this. Eight. Eight in Iron Flesh. What is going on with that? That is amazing. So as you see here, these are the units that you can acquire from Swadian Crossbowman upgrades. And in case you don't want Yeoman Orders, then you can have Swadian Longbowman instead, which I suppose would not be as hardy. No, they do not have eight in Iron Flesh this time around, but they are still rather deadly to say the least. So, yes, that is very nice to see. They also, of course, have Swadian Knights, Swadian Enforcers as their infantry. And as we move on, we have some Saranid Muhaddin Fighters, which are the level up from Saranid Archers, of course. And we are going to take a look at those now. Yeah, they are a little bit... Hmm, they're actually pretty good. Wow, look at this! Eight in Athletics! Whoa! 200 in Crossbows as well. Very deadly with that, no doubt. And then, of course, we do have some Saranid Mamluks, which upgrade into Immortals. And I can only say that Immortals are no doubt going to be incredible. Yes, as you see here, 200 in Pole Arms, 6-6 six, six in Iron Flesh and Power Strike, as well as Shield. 8 in Riding Skill. Goodness me. Wow, okay. And then, of course, you have the standard Saranid Master Archers as well. Now, these are the fellows that we were fighting previously. Now, as you see here, these are actually Kurgit units. Now, believe it or not, they have leveled up from Kurgit units, and you can choose between Tribal Warriors or upgrading them into Kurgit Lancers and Kurgit Veteran Horse Archers and so forth. So if you want to be a bandit and run around the lands with your Tribal Warriors, then you can do just that, which is actually very cool. So... Without further ado, let's just take a look at what we were facing before. As you see here, we were absolutely outgunned, outmaneuvered, outskilled, and outgeared everything else. But yes, <laughs> look at that. Absolutely incredible. Seven in horse archery as well. Very nice. And then, of course, they do level up into tribal hunters and tribal chieftains as well. Look at the weekly wage of that guy. 212. Wow. Okay, he's a level 54 as well. Just so you know, that is incredible. Nine in horse archery. No wonder we couldn't defeat those guys. Goodness me. So yes, apart from that, the Kurgit units do level up into the standard Kurgit Lancer as well as the veteran horse archer as well. And then we move on to the rocks where we have the sergeant, the sharpshooter. Very standard there. And then we have Nords, which are very interesting indeed, because we do get some Nord Shaman here, which we also have in another mod that I am currently playing a series with, and then we move on to something that we do not have in that mod, which is Veteran Rangers. Now, these level up from Nord Archers, I believe, and as you see here, look at the power draw. Just look at that. Oh yes, 10 in power draw, and 325 in archery. Now, that is 
just insane. Absolutely incredible. I cannot imagine anyone being able to survive against these veteran rangers, that is for sure. So you can just imagine the Nords in this particular mod being incredibly powerful. Just look at that. You can actually get Nord Huskarls as well as veteran rangers and Nord Shaman. I mean, I can only assume that the Nord Shaman have some sort of healing ability, maybe? I mean, look. Oh my. Okay. Yeah. So as you see here, intelligence and charisma at 40, agility at 28, and then we have power throw at 10. Wow, okay, throwing at 400 as well, so I can only assume that they are using throwing weapons here, but yes, I can only assume that the Nords are going to be incredibly powerful, so yes, without further ado, that is the army that I have decided would be rather useful to take on these tribal warriors, and we are going to take revenge upon them for what they did to us previously, so let us head in here. And we'll hopefully be able to catch up to them. Yes, there we go. Surrender or die, of course. And we are now hopefully going to be seeing our various units in action as well. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm probably not going to let our cavalry charge in too strongly here. Because I do have a feeling that our cavalry are probably going to absolutely massacre everything. And instead, we're going to be letting our infantry and archers do most of the work, as I would like to see these Saranid Muhadin archers actually use their crossbows. As you see, they are some incredible crossbows right there. Now, one of our Nord Huskars was already taken out by a tribal chieftain, but as you saw, they are incredible, those tribal chieftain, and I can only say that that is probably the reason why we had so much issue beforehand. So, let's just see how well our archers do before our infantry are beset upon. Our Saranid Master Archers are actually doing an incredible job so far. And our Nord Huskar, of course, throwing his weapons around. Yeoman Warders also doing an excellent job. So, let's do it. Let's charge in our infantry and see how fast we can take these guys out. We, of course, have already decimated their lines. And that makes me wonder, actually. Where is our Veteran Archer? Or Veteran Ranger, shall we say. And I'd like to know where he is. Because he's not actually killing much at the moment. Is he classified as an infantry? Maybe he is, and I needed to change the tag on him or something. Well, wait, was that him? I think that was him there. Yes, there he is, and... Aha, he's actually got throwing weapons. That is very strange. Does he not have a bow? Hmm, well, maybe that needs to be fixed in a future version or something along those lines, but maybe... What that is for is to prevent the Veteran Archer from being incredibly overpowered, like I thought he was. So, yes, I suppose without further ado, that is it. The battle was won. We gained 21 renown, which is of course what we lost previously, and we gained 6 renown too, which is not bad. Now, we're going to take a couple of these fellows within our ranks here, and then we'll take some of these things as well. Oh, and this actually gives us some better armor too. Not too bad. And we get a shield, which is what we need. Very good. Okay, there we are. Okay, so that is it. Steel and Sword, everyone. The download link will be in the description if you wish to try this out. Now, of course, it does have some very powerful units, so do bear that in mind if you are going to engage any of the bandit parties, especially those tribal ones. So, yes, I thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.